Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your detail and a very good uh, description and explanation. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Second. Second. For your first page, the PowerPoint, maybe you should list the the selecting on the the, the top, uh, no, the top step, right? The, the first step, right? First step is select, right? I mean the sequence, how to list the, the step, right? Ready? Not yet? How about the third? Come on. Ready? Okay, please. Thank you. <laughs> wow. All right, so we're group six. And we're going to discuss how does one acquire a global mindset and how can global leadership be developed. Um, we reverse the questions here because I believe that a global mindset is important to be a global leader. A uh -huh. global mindset means the ability to scan the world with a broad perspective, always looking for unexpected trends and opportunities. I'm going to kind of make this short because we have a lot of material. Um, and a global mindset combines an openness and awareness of a diversity um, patterns across countries and markets. Without this, you will not be a successful leader. Um, we put in this graph. A global mindset includes intellectual capital, global savviness, cognitive complexity, uh, cosmopol cosmopolitan outlook, also psychological capital, passion for diversity, quest for adventure, self-assuredness, 
diplomacy, interpersonal impact, empathy, and social capital. Without these things, you will not be a successful leader in the international environment. So we mentioned that. Um, what capabilities do global, global leaders need to acquire? They need to be, have an articulate vision values, strategy, a catalyst for strategic and cultural changes, empower others, results, and customer orientation, cross-cultural liter literate, open-mindedness, flexible, cultural sensitivity, resilient, resourceful, optimistic. Uh, this is one note that I wanted to talk about is, another note to global leadership, the rise of women in the global um, leadership position. Women use broad-based power rather than hierarchical, higher, you know, uh, uh, symbolized uh, the leverage and increased visibility in their capabilities. Um, I was reading a study about how women are becoming more and more in the leadership position and they're bringing new traits to international leadership. Here's a chart on global leadership dimensions. The dimensions of global leadership, cross-cultural relations, relationship yeah. skills, traits and values, global business expertise, global or, uh, organizing experience, expertise, uh -huh. uh, visioning, cognitive orientation. There are many different examples under each one of those, but I know we're running short on time, so I will keep going ahead. Mm -hmm. Educational and training. These are important to developing global leadership um, development. Mm -hmm. In regards to group, group collaboration, education is needed, uh, which includes working with others in relationships, um, characterized by community, flexibility, respect, um, trust, and mutual accountability. In regards to discovery, um, to me, discovery means global mindset. Um, education um, is important to help our students, especially, to understand discovery as transformational processes leading to new ways of seeing, acting, um, in turn, lead to the creation of new knowledge, actions, and things. Education and training in regards to architecting, the mindful design and uh, processes that align, balance, and synchronize organizational behavior. And education in regards to social behavior, um, interrelationship, intra-relationship among components and levels in complex system and anticipating consequences of changing in the system. Which, that's a long definition, and it just means teaching social behavior. And it goes back to the global mindset, teaching people how to get along with international communities, exactly what we're experiencing here in this school. Um, ways to help leaders to think and act globally. Promote greater cultural intelligence among leadership ranks. Enhance the representation of different cultures at top organiza organizational levels. Enhance language skills and leadership roles to facilitate communication and increase productivity. Encourage foreign assignments for future leaders. Uh -huh. for greater understanding of local laws and business arrangements. Uh -huh. and yeah. Sorry I went fast, but we had a lot of stuff to um, cover, so thank you. Very good. Thank you. Your group correct a lot of the information, huh? Yeah, thank you. And try to digest. That group three, yeah. Which group? Different cultural, uh, cultural differences so that they can be put in global projects. 
and then they can do a get analysis and identifying the needs of the individual. What we mean by this is to find out the weaknesses of the different islands and, deal, and then train them to overcome these weaknesses. And after identifying their needs, we do a customized development approach whereby you can coach and then call the talents and put them in strategic job assignments and action learning so that they can reflect on their, uh, their, their strengths and weaknesses through actual job assignments yeah, and through actions. And then we do a measurement process in terms of the 360 degree feedback. So they get feedbacks from all the different people in their company, for example, their supervisors, their customers, uh, and even their peers. However, we, uh, we acknowledge that it's not it's not enough to just uh, it's not enough for just the organization to develop the talent. The talent themselves also need to identify the things that they can do to be developed. So, acquiring a global mindset uh, means thinking like a leader across borders and being able to influence people from all over the world. This entails uh, necessary skills and experiences for an individual to properly develop a global mindset. It includes managing cross-border relationships. Um, uh, concretely, it means like practically learning the language and customs of other countries, but uh, one must also be able to harness uh, his cross-cultural communication skills, uh, develop cultural sensitivity, and get rid of personal biases and prejudice against other cultures. Uh, exposure to the international business landscape is also a good uh, way of acquiring global mindset. Of participating in meetings and taking opportunities to communicate with a diverse group of business leaders, it gives uh, a person, uh, it gives someone a personal account of how other people do it, and through learning from them, they can also apply it to uh, to themselves as well and the, the challenges that they may face in the future. Uh, also, exposure to different countries. It is good to be immersed in other culture, cultures by living somewhere that uh, where you are uh, unfamiliar with, frequently visiting and making new international friends, and also the development of a cosmopolitan outlook to be more open-minded and uh, be more open-minded and to uh, uh, be more adaptive. One um, must also keep hip hip it's uh, uh, updated with international media and current affairs. Uh, through this, uh, to, to propagate further a uh, greater worldview, exposure to international media and current affairs is a great aid because it helps the person practice critical thinking skills and analysis regarding these issues. Uh, awareness of global issues is a contributing factor to relating to other people from not just your home country but also from all over the world. Uh, one must also be able to constantly challenge the experiences and assumptions that one has, especially as this uh, helps develop flexibility and openness to change. And it is also good to find a mentor or buddy to uh, regularly share experiences with because um, uh, he can get different perspectives from different parts of the globe through uh, finding a mentor. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, your suggestion very constructive eh? and concrete. <laughs> the fourth, yeah, please come up. Yeah. important factor that is to build a global mindset for every leaders. And the global leadership consists of three elements. One, one is education and experience and the attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, for the company, uh, the company mm. hire like, people who 
was educated in uh, international business programs such as our program. So they have some ideas about uh, how, uh, the, how to read internationally. And also the company can provide some um, leadership courses for the leaders, mm -hmm. like seminars or trainings. And then, or for experience, the company can send leaders abroad, maybe for three months or something, to to have the experience. Mm -hmm. And for the leaders itself, it has it has they have to be have the right attitude to face like working in the different countries, or leaving their families. Mm -hmm. So they've got to have an open. They have to be open-minded, intelligent, and patient. Yep. Because when they go abroad, they might have some obstacles. Mm -hmm. They have to deal with it slowly. And now we're going to tell you how can company assess their global leadership. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's very important to make some psychometrical tests to evaluate your workers, can they work globally or not. Mm -hmm. So we need to pass them through a series of interviews. Maybe it should be once a year or well, one time for two years, it depends on your company, on the size of your company and of your global mindset. And you, you should provide 360 degree feedbacks, uh, which will help you to improve and play performance because it helps that to evaluate and see different perspectives of their performance. So each employee should uh, try to uh, assess themselves. And, uh, uh, next part, uh, we recommend you to organize collective management conferences. For example, once a year you can uh, just uh, organize a conference by Skype. For example, if you work in China and in America, they can share their experience in hiring and firing. And uh, the final decision, you should coordinate worldwide but execute locally. For example, hiring and promotions are the local responsibilities but high potential prospects and assessments and some uh, methodology how to assess people is going and identified globally. Hmm. I think that these uh, methods will help you to create a global mindset mm -hmm. and to educate your future leaders. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you. Huh? <coughs> so you got this uh, from the p your paper, right? Yeah. Mm, good. I think that you have very good preparation, huh? for the next uh, presentation. Yeah. The fifth. Yeah, right. Developing global leadership 
The first thing we have to describe the forces behind the globalization of business. This involves the three main most important ones. Technological innovations, understanding marketing trends, and of course, developing the right business strategy. And then, the second point. The leader should be able to manage this company in a global context. This thinking should not be so narrow. He should understand that the different parts of the world have different needs and adapt his strategy according to it. And then the third one. He should create a worldwide business team, but not only should he be able to create, he should be able to lead it, because just the creation is obvious. And he is able to lead a team with a diversified employee person from different parts of the world. He should, uh, he should have the right leadership ability to do it. And the final point is, he should adopt a functional global organizational structure, not like a, just a, like a single country organizational structure. He should adopt an organizational structure that is able to encompass the major difference from different parts of the world and have a right integration. Only with the global organization structure can the company uh, perform properly. Otherwise, everything else just wouldn't work out. Mm, thank you. Mm. Mm. And we are studying growth to be more familiar with different countries. And uh, uh, if our students have some opportunities to intern in the company, they could get more practical skills. Uh, correspondent, uh, we think that students could be sanctions from different countries and by them, they could know more about their country's cultures and also learn the mother language from them. Have some activity tests. Um, I think these tests students could know more about their advantages and also the weakness. So after getting these tests, um, they could um, improve their abilities. Yeah, very practical, huh? Um, mm. and when we enter the workplace, um, we think the companies could offer the employees some promotion abroad opportunities so the employees could. Um, Know more about different countries who will be spouse and uh, before the employees go abroad, uh, the company could offer them some training, uh, uh, some training programs so they could tell the employees know more about uh, the countries they are going to. Okay, Liz, yes, thank you. Yeah, I think you have a very good discussion, huh? But still, yeah, uh, more step need. Okay, go. Please. Hey, you got all this from the discussion, huh? Mm. 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 Okay, good. Anna, huh? Mm. Everybody can hear you. Uh, hey everybody, we are group four. Uh, we're going to present uh, our report. The first one, I'm going to do the first one, my friend going to do the second one. So, how can global leadership be developed? We divide it uh, into two parts the human part and technology part. Uh -huh. part if the important is like we do, we do have some kind of seminar and panels. Uh, and inviting, for example, some guests coming from a variety of fields and branches, coming from a variety of world to share their thoughts, 
their knowledge and their experience to each other. So swimming is going to be a, an occasion for managers and leaders to make together a chance their thought and their uh, and their experience in the variety of work. And the oldest part is uh, training courses. By training courses, it's like a broad concept. By training courses, we mean uh, offer a variety of language courses, a practical, maybe cross cultural training conferences, and a variety of uh, training. And the third one is like job rotation. For example, someone working in Asia 10 years, maybe it could be a good leader, but he doesn't have any idea about how European market is. So maybe by job rotation, it's going to help him to open his mind and maybe understand better the, the way others, other country leaders think about the market. And the fourth one is like high diversity. For example, a company would, would like, for example, to open uh, to the globalization, need to, to hire a variety of managers, different backgrounds, different cultures, and to enlarge the, the knowledge and the diversity of uh, his company. And the fifth one is like compensation for improvement. By compensation, we mean that a, a company could set like uh, a competition. For example, if uh, you're working in Asia and you have like 20K per month, the company will say, okay, we're going to, to offer a, a, a position for someone going to work in the fr in France market or maybe Japan market. So it's like incentive to improve his salary. So uh, by organizing, uh, by setting that kind of plan, people, leaders will work and have incentive to, to open their mind to understand better the, the, the older countries' markets. And the second ones, like the second part, technology. By technology, we mean that we could use a database and teleconferencing. By database, for example, we could have like, uh, some feedbacks uh, to help each other understand the work and the thought for, for all those uh, uh, companies. And I'm going to let my, my classmates present. Yeah, very good uh, classification, huh? Hi, I'm Michael, and I'm going to be talking about how does one acquire a global mindset. And a lot of the methods are also previously mentioned in how to develop a global leader. I share out some other ones. And the general one is what the companies can do, such as have social networking and have people interact more with, with others from different cultures, different backgrounds. And also diversity working environments. The company should set up um, cross-cultural teams and have people from different backgrounds work together so they can build a better understanding, have more openness, open-mindedness, and also inspire more creativity. And that's oh, another event is uh, the company should have uh, team building events, such as sport events like company basketball games or something like that. And also cocktail parties outdoor activities and field trips where people can go and have more exposure to different cultures and different people. And what people can do themselves on a personal level is to travel more, go on more vacation or different business trips, go to different places, see more. And also reading, they should be more knowledgeable in the global areas, not just the local news. They should read news about global global economy, global crisis right now. And also, in general, just have more conversations with people that are from more global places. Mm, yeah. And self-improvement, what you can do on a personal level is also learn new languages, yeah. just study more, go to, to take an MBA course and meet people from different different countries. Yeah, Very good, yeah. So this, this is the personal and the other, I suggest to be interpersonal, right? Interpersonal, better than the general, right? Use this uh, interpersonal, okay? The last? That's maybe the more dedicated, huh? Hi, we are doing fun. Uh, Michael, 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 please. Uh, 
Hazrat. Uh, sorry. Um, I'm not sure if I used to use microphone, so. Okay. And Cecilia, this is Jay. We are talking about um, how can global leadership be developed? Uh, leadership in a company will be more diversified in terms of culture, gender, age, and nationality and experiences. Which previous, previous group might talk about this idea more frequently, so I'm just going to skip up. We are, our group uh, focus on the idea is like um, hiring local people and arranging business trip to leaders to exchange to, uh, to local market so they can really see the problem and they can figure out the solution. So it's definitely, you know, uh, definitely enhance the ability of the leadership. And the global policy by the spatial market. We are, we are talking about a global identity, like a, creating a value of company. Uh, we would like to give an example like IKEA. So here in the in a whole world, uh, no matter in Taiwan or in China or in Thailand, they have a uh, blue, blue, brand and a uh, yellow world. So it's very identified to customer. So, and like a, uh, and also the Chanel. The first brand. Okay. Here I'm going to present a, an example from IBM. As I mentioned, three key points about developing global uh, leadership. The first one is to grow locally and globally via a consistent methodology, which means a long business uh, business strategies with national priorities and social goals. <laughs> and to uh, local entities and expand market relevance. The second one is to develop leadership, which means provide uh, more employees with opportunities to enhance their skills and offer more better uh, global experience earlier in their careers, like a travel around in different office. And the third one is enable the GIA's globally integrated enterprise vision, so uh, which means to accelerate uh, enterprise-wide collaboration and an uh, organization cultural best on shared value. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Very good illustration, huh? IBM case. Uh, another case that I will illustrate for you is the Dupont, right? Dupont were select she let the local talent and develop them become the global talent by means of uh, this uh, close boundary and close uh, discipline and close uh, function and close uh, uh, cultures rotation okay by means of this uh, rotation they can get promoted uh, from this country to another country from this business to another business so yeah by means of this uh, global development process uh, they can develop more and more global talent work for them across border, across uh, function, across business. Thank you. Thank you for that.